Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe permanent dipole-dipole interactions. We've already seen that there are three types of intermolecular forces. We've got induced dipole-dipole interactions, which are also called London forces or dispersion forces. We have permanent dipole-dipole interactions, and we have hydrogen bonds. In the last video, we looked at London forces. Remember that London forces can form between any atom or molecule. And if you haven't watched the video on London forces, then you should watch it now. In this video, we're looking at the second type of intermolecular force. These are called permanent dipole-dipole interactions. In an earlier video, we saw that many molecules have got a permanent dipole, and a good example is hydrogen chloride. The chlorine atom has a greater electronegativity than the hydrogen atom. This means that the electron pair in the covalent bond is more attracted to the chlorine atom, and this makes the chlorine atom slightly negative compared to the hydrogen atom. When two molecules of hydrogen chloride get near enough, then their permanent dipoles can lead to an attraction like this. Scientists call this a permanent dipole-dipole interaction, and this is an example of an intermolecular force. Now one key idea you need to understand is that only molecules of the permanent dipole can experience this type of intermolecular force. I'm showing here the molecules trichloromethane and tetrachloromethane. As you can see, both molecules contain polar bonds. Trichloromethane has a permanent overall dipole, in other words a dipole moment. However, in the case of tetrachloromethane, this molecule is completely symmetrical, and because of this the bond polarities cancel out, so tetrachloromethane has got no overall permanent dipole. This means that trichloromethane has permanent dipole-dipole interactions, whereas tetrachloromethane does not. Now this raises an important point. Because trichloromethane has got permanent dipole-dipole interactions, we might expect it to have a higher boiling point than tetrachloromethane. However, this is not the case. In fact, tetrachloromethane has a higher boiling point. To explain this, we need to remember that permanent dipole-dipole interactions are not the only force acting. Remember that all molecules and atoms experience London forces, and the size of the London forces depends on the number of electrons present. Trichloromethane has a total of 58 electrons. However, tetrachloromethane has 74 electrons. This means that the London forces are stronger in tetrachloromethane, and this explains why tetrachloromethane has a higher boiling point than trichloromethane. We can see a similar effect if we look at the hydrogen halides. I'm showing you here the boiling point of the hydrogen halides. All of these molecules have a permanent dipole, so permanent dipole-dipole interactions are acting in all three cases. The strength of the permanent dipole decreases going down the table from hydrogen chloride to hydrogen iodide and that's due to the decreasing electronegativity of the halogens as we move down group 7. However, as you can see, the boiling point actually increases as we move from hydrogen chloride to hydrogen iodide. This is because a molecule of hydrogen chloride only has 18 electrons. However, a molecule of hydrogen bromide has 36 electrons, and a molecule of hydrogen iodide has got 54 electrons. So because of the increased number of electrons, the London forces increase as we make our way down the table and this causes the boiling point of the hydrogen halides to increase. So when you're looking at permanent dipole-dipole interactions, you always need to remember that London forces will also be acting. Now you'll notice that I didn't include hydrogen fluoride in this table, and you'll see why in the next video when we look at hydrogen bonding. <laughs>